How's everyone doing today? It's Kiwi Tapes. So news broke a couple nights back that King Cobra JFS had been thrown in jail around the holidays for public intoxication. It happened on the 23rd, and apparently Josh said that he had done some really messed up stuff and that his dad let him out of the car to loaf and jug, and before he knew it, he was in handcuffs. Well, we have the police report here today, so we're gonna read the police report, we're gonna speculate a little bit, and then we're gonna watch some clips of his response. So we're gonna read the police report first. Upon my arrival, I contacted the RP Clint Saunders, who was standing outside of his vehicle, which was parked under the awning at the fuel pumps. Clint stated that his 31-year-old son Joshua Saunders is intoxicated and causing a disturbance. Clint stated Josh consumed an entire bottle of hard alcohol in the vehicle. Clint also stated that Josh made several suicidal and homicidal statements. Clint stated that he no longer felt safe living with Josh for the rest of the night especially with Josh intoxicated. Clint added a bunch of stuff that was redacted. I'm assuming that that would be information about Josh's mental disorders. Officer observations. I then contacted Josh, who is sitting in the rear passenger seat of Clint's vehicle. I observed a strong sm I'm sorry, this isn't funny. I observed a strong odor of alcohol coming from Josh during my contact with him. I also observed Josh's eyes, which were bloodshot watery, and extremely lethargic. <laughs> Josh's speech was slurred and slow. This is just every day, I'm sorry officer, but the eyes and the speech, that's, <laughs> that's all the time, man. Okay, however, he does state that he does not have the desire to harm himself or anyone else several times, admitting that he drank alcohol, but denying to have made any suicidal or homicidal statements earlier that day. Officer Actions I explained to Clint and Josh that I believed it was best that I transport him to the ARC so that he can detox from alcohol that he consumed. Clint agreed to this plan, and we were inevitably able to have Josh agree to go to the ARC as well, so it took a little convincing. Dispatch advised me that the ARC was having an issue with the heating in their building, and that they would not be accepting new intakes at the time. At this point in the contact, Clint had departed from the scene. I advised Josh that the ARC would no longer be an option for him during this incident. So it sounds like Clint left Josh in the capable hands of this officer, and this officer was going to send Josh to a location where he could detox. It seems like it wasn't like a jail situation, maybe like a, a shelter, I'm assuming. Clint drove off with that in mind. Little did he know that Josh, Josh would screw it all up. I explained to Josh that he could admit himself to the hospital in order to have his mental health and alcohol consumption evaluated. I also explained to Josh that if he did not want to admit into the hospital that he could stay the night in the comma shelter. Josh was adamantly not willing to accept either of these options despite my efforts to convince him that it was better than being outside in the below zero degree weather. I then told Josh he could admit himself into the hospital or I would have to place him under arrest for public intoxication. Josh continued to refuse to go to the hospital. I placed Josh under arrest for public intoxication. I then placed Josh into handcuffs using the standard cuffing procedure, and I transported Josh to the detention facility where I booked him under the charge of public intoxication. So that's what the officer observed. Clint stated that Josh drank a whole bottle of hard liquor in his car. See, the premise for this trip was that they were going to visit Josh's step-grandparents, I believe. I don't think they were Clint's parents, I think that they were Clint's wife's parents. And Josh had drank a whole bottle of hard liquor on the way. My problem with that is I don't really see Clint letting that slide. If he's driving, he knows that having an open container in the car is illegal. And I just don't see him admitting to that, so it's a little weird. I don't understand this whole situation. Josh says before he knew it, he was outside of the loaf and jug. I would love to know personally if he ended up drinking that in the car, if that's the truth. We'll get into the Papa Nips conspiracy theories here at the end. I have a couple theories on what really happened. But for now, I'm going to let the man himself explain his reasoning for visiting the clink. I'll hop in here and there. You guys know the usual format. But just keep in mind all of that police report, which is an actual fact. All of that is true. Keep that in mind when Josh is speaking. It's this guy! What up, YouTube? It's your boy, King Cobra. We chillin'. 
officially like rock star villains. I did get arrested in Cheyenne. And honestly, that was my wake up call. Nothing really happened when I was in prison. I was pretty much in a drunk tank in a holding cell by myself for the entire night and then for half of Saturday. They let me out of the jail without having to pay a bond. And the cop that arrested me was super patient, so I appreciate that. Uh, but honestly, that was my wake-up call to cut down on my drinking, you know? Yesterday, I had two tall cans of Bud Light and a half pint of Jack Daniels, not going to lie. But today, I bought one tall can of Bud Light. I bought it this morning. And I have not touched it or opened it. I was waiting until after 5 o'clock to have it because I am going to cut down on my drinking. Rudolph, thank you for your $1 holler. That's what's up. <coughs> Fuck the trolls. Tom, thank you for your $1 donation. And again, fuck the trolls. You do realize that if the trolls give me a dollar in Cash App or PayPal and they send a bunch of nasty messages, I'm going to twist the message up to make them look stupid and then take their money and run with it. So, <laughs> yeah, how do you like them apples? I wanted to put uh, sushi and bacon on my uh, nachos that I did earlier, but when I ordered sushi and wasabi, they were out. So it is what it is. I ended up getting uh, some crab meat instead. Now that's after 5 o'clock and I haven't had a drink all day. Let's get into it. Grab our trusty cup here that the fans have sent. I don't even remember what the fuck I did, to be honest. All I can remember was getting out of my dad's van in Cheyenne at a loafing jug and just to stretch my legs and smoke a cigarette from traveling in the car. Next thing you know, I'm in jail. And when my dad told me what the fuck I did, I felt like the biggest piece of shit. I had 1% left on my phone. I got all of my stuff back except for my pipe tobacco and my magic wand. So it is what it is. I made another one to replace it, so eh. And when I got out of uh, jail, there was a bell tower down the street going off on Saturday. And then a bunch of crows and a raven were flying over my head. It was majestic, to say the least. So the, the two things I'm going to do in my life, YouTube, to better myself is to slow down on my drinking and uh, to seek some therapy. Even though therapy is a waste of time, I'm far too intelligent for that shit. I don't need a therapist to know why I'm depressed. You know? I'm not going to go into reasons why I'm depressed on YouTube. That's just none of y'all's business. But, uh, I'm not trying to spurg out, but when Ozzy Osbourne ended up in, in prison for almost killing Sharon because he was way too drunk and way too high, and he had this wake up moment of, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I didn't try to kill anyone, mind you, but I did have one of those moments. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I, honestly, my dad is awesome. I, I don't deserve the awesome family that I have. And normally when I drink or get drunk and I black out, I don't get aggressive or violent or angry or belligerent. Normally I just stumble around and pass out. You know what I'm saying? That's only happened like twice in the last couple of months. And it's not a good look, you know? So I am making a solid effort here to drink less. In fact, on Sunday at Christmas dinner, when I had it with my family here in town, a family friend brought over some delicious scotch. I'm not going to give his name, but I proved to my dad that, you know, I can cut down on my drinking. 
if you want to count my drinks that I had at Christmas dinner on Sunday, I literally had two. That was it. I had a Jack and Coke, classic, and then I had a small taste of the scotch that he that he brought over, and that was it. You know, and my dad's words, hey man, that took real real strength. I'm proud of you, Josh. You know what pisses me off about alcoholism is people's attitudes towards it. They treat you like, you know, and, oh, you're helpless. You're powerless to do anything. You know, instead of being like, that's a negative reinforcement, people. Now, I'm not going to stop drinking or doing drink combos because that's what I do. People on YouTube love my drink combos. However, you're not going to see it as much. I'm not cutting down on alcohol for anyone but myself and for my family and my fans who care about me. And honestly, fuck the trolls. Y'all's obsession with me is more unhealthy than my drinking. Now, when I went into uh, when I went to prison, they pretty much took everything. My rings, my spikes. I got it all back minus my pipe tobacco and my magic wand, but it is what it is. I can always get more pipe tobacco, so I'm not worried about that. And I'm a master wand maker, so there you go. When I asked the cop about it, he said, well, you might have lost it when you were at Loaf and Jug or whatever. But when I asked my dad about it, he said, well, the cops took it, and it's probably in the... Uh, police department vault somewhere it is what it is uh but honestly going to jail was honestly a wake-up call for me you know because at first i didn't realize what the fuck i did you know and then when i was talking to my dad on the phone in jail and stuff freaking there was this dude across from me on the other side of the hallway, just telling me to shut up and just trying to, as hard as he can to start shit with me. I pretty much told him to fuck off. You know, this dude was saying, you look like a sex offender and you have no friends. And I said, dude, I hate sickos more than I love Ozzy Osbourne. And then I told him, I says, your mom's a sex offender. And then I told him, I said, dude, I'm a famous YouTuber with almost 50,000 subscribers. I got more friends than you'll ever have. You can already see that Josh is trying to spin this visit to jail as some big macho thing that he did. Yeah, you know, he's been to jail. He's cool. He's a goth badass from hell. He practices dark magic. That's why his torso phases in and out. He wants to make this a big badass triumphant thing. When in reality, it's not, Josh. It is a rock bottom moment. Your family wants you to seek therapy, and in your own words, the only reason you're doing it is for them. You claim that you are too smart for therapy, Josh. That tells me everything I need to know about you, bro. But when I started watching you, you were nowhere near this full of yourself. I swear to God, it is ever since you turned on that, that PayPal and that those cash app donations, ever since people just started throwing money at you, you've gotten so stuck up, my man. So stuck up. It makes it hard to watch you at times. I'm sorry, I know this has turned into a rant, but it's the truth. It has turned into e-begging simulator. Right in front of you, he might as well have, uh, he has his cup but he's not shaking change around in it asking for money he's just saying donations are much appreciated no this has turned into alcoholic begging simulator you just got thrown into jail for public intoxication you need therapy and on top of that i'd already had my clothes on my hats and i was getting the fuck out of there so i wasn't gonna do shit to make me have to stay any longer as far as i was concerned i'm like Fuck you, asshole. I'm getting out of here. So you have fun being in the in the tank. And nobody really fucked with me physically. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't have let it happen. And, uh, yeah. I was pretty much in jail for, like, all of Friday night and half of Saturday. 
And what did I do to entertain myself? Seems how I didn't have technology. I pretty much fucked with people. There was this other dude across the across the hall from me. And I kept on doing shit like, hello, Clarice. And then telling obnoxious Christmas jokes as loud as I could just to make the police officers laugh their asses off. You know, dumb shit like that. And they would not let me out until I blew complete zeros. Which, you know, it is what it is. But honestly, I feel like a, a piece of shit for what I did. I said some really hurtful things. I'm not going to get into detail what got me there, but it was so bad. Like I was stumbling around the loaf and jug parking lots and I blacked out and didn't even realize what I was doing. And freaking people were trying to get gas and they were honking their horn telling me to get the fuck out of the way. And my dad kept on telling me, Josh, calm down, Josh, calm down. He said it was surreal watching it. And that was kind of my wake up call. Like, you know what? I love to drink alcohol, but I don't need to do it in like excessive amounts. A little bit every now and then ain't gonna hurt. I'm pretty much ignoring my phone right now so I can focus on the video. So yeah, if you can avoid going to jail, I would. Thank you, uh, Clint Whitaker, for your $5 to Cash App and PayPal. They write, get you a beer on me, too, Cobes. Cheers. You know, the worst, the worst of it that happened was I lost my pipe tobacco. I lost one of my magic wands, and I disappointed my family. And that's not a good feeling, dude. I love... My stepmom's side of the family as much as I love my dad's side of the family. And the only reason I'm seeking help is for them, not for me. Because like I said, I'm far too intelligent for therapy. I don't need a goddamn therapist to be like, well, I'm depressed because I'm living in a society full of brain-dead, retarded idiots who are obsessed with their, their goddamn cell phones. You know how it is, YouTube, when I get mad or depressed about some shit, I go off on uh, YouTube and rant about it. You guys and gals and they, thems, you all don't have to donate, but if you do, it's greatly appreciated. You know, I don't beg for money. I really don't. You know, there are people out there who actually beg for money. And me, on the other hand, I'm like, I get it. If you can't donate, I understand. You know, but if you do, it's greatly appreciated kind of thing. 100% YouTube. I love to drink alcohol. I don't need it. That's the thing of it. I will acknowledge I love alcohol. Okay? I will acknowledge that. However, for me, I want to drink. I don't need it. I want it. There's a difference. I go through periods where I don't drink as much. And I mainly just smoke pot because, let's be real, folks, marijuana is sacred to cobra cult, black flame to light my green smoke, you know. And uh, I've honestly found out of all the things that I've done to, to alleviate the stress of my life, marijuana is great. I smoke it. I feel one with myself. I feel at peace with the world. And I'm more chilled out, you know. Like Cat Williams said, there's this thing in weed that's called fuck it, and if you can get that shit in your system, it'll change your goddamn perspective on some shit. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to pay the light bills. They don't want the whole thing. They, want, they don't want a deposit. They want the whole thing. Fuck it. Hit the blunt one time and see if it don't change your perspective on some shit. Because I don't know what I'm going to do about these lights. <sighs> fuck them goddamn lights. I got 12 candles. I've been waiting to burn these bitches. Cubs, please take Danny Brown up on his offer to do a boxing match. Also, please get in touch with him for an interview. You could get legit famous. Don't fuck this up. I'm totally down. I would fuck Cyrex up in a heartbeat, dude. You don't even got to pay me to fucking do it. I'll just fucking kick his ass myself. And shout out to Danny Brown. That's what's up.
Uh, I was being drunk and obnoxious and yelling and cussing and you know what I'm saying? Just being stupid, basically. Well, at least that we can all agree on, Josh. But I don't think what we can all agree on is exactly what happened there. Nobody knows but Papa Nips. Now, I'm going to give you my crazy out there conspiracy theory, and then I'm going to give you what actually happened. I'm going to start with my crazy out there conspiracy theory. So Clint brought the whole family over to his wife's parents for the holidays, Josh's step-grandparents. And Josh got really drunk and he got into his sicko talk. He started talking about what he was going to do to sickos and God what he would give to just end them all. And I am assuming that this made Clint's in-laws a little uncomfortable and they said, hey, we're not really comfortable with Josh spending the night here. Clint can't really take Josh to a hotel because God knows what Josh will do. He might wander off into the night and freeze to death. And Clint can't really call the cops out there to pick up Josh for being belligerent because then the trolls would get a hold of his in-law's address. So in his infinite wisdom, Nipple Daddy throws Josh in the car and says, hey, come with me to the loafing jug. He tells Josh, hey, get out, you know? Have a smoke, you know, use a lighter in front of all these gas pumps. Just light a cigarette up in front of all these gas pumps and, and just relax, Joshua. I know you're having a hard time. That's when Clint makes his move. He phones the police. The police get there and they take Josh away for the night. That way Nipple Daddy's in-laws aren't doxxed. Josh is taken away so he can relax for the night. Everybody's safe. That is my crazy conspiracy theory. I think that Clint took Josh to the loafing jug so that his in-law's address wouldn't get doxxed. But what I really think happened was that Josh probably smuggled a bottle of liquor into his dad's car. Clint didn't know about it. I'm assuming Clint found the empty bottle, got really pissed. Him and Josh got into it. Josh started talking about how he hated sickos. And Clint called the cops when they got out of the loafing jug just so he wouldn't have to deal with Josh all night. Either way, I don't think that Clint knew Josh was going to go to jail. I think that he thought Josh would go to a facility or maybe the hospital or something just to get out of his hair. But he definitely did not post bail for Josh. So he tried to make it a little bit of a learning lesson. Either way, there is something mysterious on the nipple daddy front. I can't even stress to you guys more that I, I think that Clint, Clint's not telling us the whole truth in that police report, so maybe some details will come out in the coming months, maybe the body cam footage will be released. I don't know. I just had so much fun, something finally happening in the Cobra universe. I'm gonna hold out just a little bit of hope that Josh will maybe seek some help and take it seriously, but I'm beginning to really doubt it. Thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, let me know what I can improve down in the comments below. Let me know what you like. Just let me know how your day was going. Thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe, and keep it keepy.